Okay, welcome back. Uh, so this video will probably be pretty short and sweet. Um, here we're just going to do some basic split by functions in Jamovi. And so first I'd like to give some context for the data we're working with. Um, so this is data that I created um, just for the sake of example. And so, um, so let's say we have data from an organization that we're working with. And uh, we have a few different things. One is division. This variable tells us the division in the organization um, for the individuals, right? The individuals all have unique case numbers as per usual, um, or at least as I do things. And so we have three different fields, or three different divisions. One is people who work in the field, like say this is a construction firm or something, people who are out there doing the work. Uh, operations management, uh, maybe contractors, upper level managers, whatever it may be. And people who work in finance, right? Handling the accounting, logistics, that kind of stuff. Um, we also have a training variable, which is a simple binary yes, no. Um, there is, let's say we had a safety training that we offered and this data tells us that people did or did not complete that. Um, EAP use. EAP stands for Employee Assistance Program. Um, if you're not familiar with those, it's kind of like workplace or worksite wellness programs. So like sometimes it's benefits packages, people get things like, oh, like gym memberships, nutrition advice, counseling sessions, personal training. They can come lots of different forms. Um, but let's say we offer this as part of our benefits package. And this question just tells us a basic yes or no. Did they use it or not? Right? It's not telling us how much they use it, just if they did or did not, maybe in the past year or whenever this data was collected. Um, accidents tells us that quite simply the number of accidents reported, which there was damage to a person or property. And BMI or body mass index, uh, basic uh, ratio of height and weight, uh, which tells us some basic things about someone's body, body composition. Um, it's flawed, but it's something that's used in medicine nonetheless. Um, so here we have our data. And so you can see this all, all in our, uh, our spreadsheet. Um, so case, division, training, all this good stuff. Okay, and so let's say we want to do a basic analysis first. So let's do, um, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, so let's look at, let's just look at all of it. Let's toss it in there and see what happens. Okay, so we can see, actually, let's pull these out. Um, whoops. Um, let's look at these so we can interpret things like, like the mean. So we can see mean BMI was 27.9 which I think technically is overweight. I think between 25 and 30-ish is overweight. Um, accidents, average was 0.1. So average doesn't make a lot of sense here, but it's low. You see the maximum number of accidents was one. Um, so it seems like some people had accidents, but a lot did not of our sample size of 218. Um, we can add other things, right? So say we wanted to add in variance, um, right? You can see that. Um, we could look at skewness if we wanted to. We, we haven't really covered how to interpret these stats yet, but now you should be familiar with skewness as a concept. Um, we could make quartiles, right? Cut points for four equal groups. Um, so for example, for BMI, if we wanted to make quartiles, uh, we could have 24, 28, 32. Um, if we wanted to make, I guess, two, right? Then that'll just give us the median again, All right? And so again, just kind of, trying to round out the um, the content that we're covering when we talk about variance and central tendency and whatnot. Um, we can look at the mode. Uh, most common BMI was 24. Um, yeah, so some basics for the continuous variables here. Let's, let's add these in as well. Um, yeah, and so maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense here. So let's, yeah, and, and I don't want to make this video too long. So let's kick out some frequency tables. Um, so we can see, okay, we had 88 people in the field, or roughly 41%, about 33% operations management, 27% finance. Right, so we can look at these things. Uh, frequencies of training. So it looks like a lot of people did not complete safety training. And um, how many accidents did we have? Doesn't quite tell us, does it? Um, let's say... Actually, that would be the sum, wouldn't it, for accidents? Um, if, if the maximum was one, then if we're just adding up the accidents, um, we could say, okay, there were 22 accidents this year. Let's say I'm curious to see if there are more accidents in people who 
um, did not go to safety training, right? That's a good example of how we could use this split by function. Because what the split by function does is essentially it does your analysis, like a basic descriptive or frequency, and it's going to split the results by some sort of variable. So for example, let's do a split by, uh, what was it, training. So accident split by training. Okay, so now we can see, actually I have, I have a lot of things here. Um, let's go ahead and reduce some of these. Actually, I'll just, I'll just stick to the sum. Okay, so we can see accidents split by training. Uh, we can see that those who did not have safety training reported 15 accidents, and those who completed safety training reported 7 accidents. Okay, so it seems like there, there's some basic differences there. And importantly, later in this semester, in this class, we'll talk about statistical significance. And so in other words, if we see a difference here, how do we tell if it's statistically meaningful that difference or if it might just happen to be random chance or something that could be due to random chance and so at this point we can't interpret um, I guess the magnitude of of the difference um, we could say that okay yeah those who didn't have safety training reported eight more accidents um, but from a statistician standpoint we can't necessarily talk about significance just yet um, maybe let's let's make a bar apply here um, Okay, yeah, and backing up the significance thing, if, if that is confusing, don't worry, we'll talk about it later this semester. But I just want to say at this point, this is just a basic way to see if there are differences, not necessarily to interpret the magnitude or practical meaningness, meaningfulness of those differences. And so here we can see, yeah, bar graph, very obvious difference between um, those who completed it and those who did not, right? They seem safer. Um, so let's say, let's. Let's try it. What, what if we put BMI in here? What happens? That's telling us we can't. And why is it telling us we can't? Oh, it's flashing this little thing, right? So this is an important thing to know is that it's telling us these can only be nominal variables. And, and if you think about why that's the case, if we had an accident split by BMI, well, BMI, there were so many possible options because it's a continuous variable. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so we would have a table that would just be off the charts long, trying to split these two variables up. Um, so that's that's something you should know is that the split by function only works for nominal variables. So we could also look, for example, at accidents per division. And what do we see? Yeah, we see some differences. People working in the field had much higher rates of accidents, which makes sense, right? If, if this is a construction firm, for example, they're probably doing more hazardous work than someone who's sitting in the office playing with the calculator. Um, if anyone's going into finance, I, I apologize. Um, yeah, and so so we can continue playing with this. Let's say we also wanted to look at, um, let's see, BMI by division. Oh, whoops, wrong one. Yeah, and again, we see something here. We see, okay, it looks like people who work out in the field have lower BMIs, which also might make sense, right? They're on their feet. Most of the day, they, they do more physical activity than, again, people who are sitting inside punching calculators or, or whatever finance people do. Um, maybe we want to look at BMI by EAP benefits. Okay, so it looks like there's a, or I guess this is a sum, isn't it? So let's do mean. Yeah, and so here, mean BMI, looks like there's a slight difference, but, but it's not huge. Um, let's go back to our BMI by division. Look at the means. Yeah, okay. If we have our means here, we can see some, some more substantial differences telling us what these values are in our bar chart. Um, so hopefully this is giving you kind of a sense of how we can use the split by function. Uh, very simple way to sort of split up our data and assess some basic differences. Um, again, without determining statistical significance, it could be a simple way to just understand our data a little better and, and get some basic descriptive stats that we can kick out there. Like if we were developing a report for this organization, we could tell them just this, right? Average BMI differed by division, number of accidents differed by um, if people had completed safety training or not, X, Y, and Z, other thing. And, uh, and related to that, it, it can also be useful to help us build various figures for this. Like we've stuck the bar, part, or bar plots because that's what we know. 
um, say we wanted to look at box plots, kind of telling us, um, yeah, upper and lower values for that range. We can see here clearly there are differences in the group. So here it's telling us that average. Um, here it's sort of, yeah, it's telling us where the values fall within each group. Um, we can look at violin. Yeah, and so we can, these ones are kind of weird to interpret. Um, but so the, the width represents the number of responses or number of individuals or cases. So here we can see and field much less individuals or uh, much fewer individuals had high BMIs than people in finance where there's much more um, width in this violin. There's many more cases of people with, with higher rates of BMI. Um, I forget what density is. Yeah, another example of just a different way to see that. I think that's a little more in intuitive than violin in this context. Right, but so I encourage you to play around with these things. Um, yeah, and just and to familiarize yourself with the ways that the split by function can help us to understand our data and also to report our data to others.